Well, good morning, Castle Hill students, and welcome to chapel this week. A little shorter, a little more compact than normal. Uh, I wanted to talk with you all as a school family, every student across every grade level and families who are joining us today uh, about a topic, an important part of a topic that we've been addressing through all the different speakers uh, and the messages that have been coming your way. You could capsulize all this in short. We've been talking about facing the storms in life, not just the COVID-19 uh, virus storm, although that's one of the biggest storms we have faced in my lifetime. And at the same time, you and I both know there are lots of storms to face uh, around us all through our lives. Tough times come to good people. And so I have a takeaway for you today. And that before we even get started, uh, just the idea that you and I cannot really face our storms well without the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm going to take a few minutes today to talk to every student on campus, really no matter your age, about the work and the power and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Christian life and facing life storms is actually really impossible to do well or to do our best without the Holy Spirit and without understanding how the Holy Spirit works. So here's what the, you need to know. Here's the 411 on uh, what you really even must know about the Holy Spirit to live a great life for God and to get through life's storms. Now, the Holy Spirit, you know, is the third person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some uh, have said uh, very uh, quoting Deuteronomy 6, that as God said about himself, there is one God, but there are three persons in the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You see this in the Trinity when uh, we see what the scriptures have to say about our salvation. God the Father thought it. It was his plan. Jesus Christ, God the Son, bought it. He paid the price when he went to the cross. He bought our salvation. He paid our debt. And then the Holy Spirit, God the Father thought it. God the Son uh, bought it, paid the price. And God the Holy Spirit brought it. The way that we come to know Jesus is when the Holy Spirit begins to work on us. So right now, I'm going to be going through four fast fa facts that you need to know about the Holy Spirit to live larger than life, to love like God, to be like God, and of course, to face life's storms. Walk in His ways, Walk in his ways, walk in his ways, walk in his ways. Oh, 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 oh,
Well, that was some amazing worship. And that great song about the spirit of the living God really uh, opens the door for me to share these four fast facts about how the Holy Spirit uh, works in your life, uses your life, and helps you prepare to face life storms, including the one that we're in right now. Uh, the first fast fact is that the Holy Spirit convicts or squeezes on your heart about sin. You know, uh, by the Holy Spirit, we know that we need a, a Savior in Jesus, and we know that we need to be saved. You know, that doesn't just happen by accident. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 8, that the Holy Spirit convicts or squeezes on the hearts of every person around the world. It says he convicts the world of sin, of righteousness, right and wrong, and judgment. And that way, everybody in the whole world gets that level of the ministry or the work of the Holy Spirit. And the second thing is that the Holy Spirit lives in you. The second fast fact is that the Holy Spirit, if you respond when he convicts you of sin, turn your heart to Jesus. He lives in you uh, after you ask Jesus into your life. When Christ comes into your heart, the Holy Spirit comes in and bonus, he comes in, Hebrews 13, 5 says, to live forever. In fact, that verse says he'll never leave you or forsake you. You may have disappointed God many times, but he will never disappoint you. It's called eternal life forever life. Uh, the third fast fact about the Holy Spirit is that he does it all. He guides, uh, he leads your life, he reveals, he shows you what you need to see, he helps you know what you need to know, and then he helps you do what you need to do. He also protects you. In short, the Holy Spirit transforms your life. Everything changes after the Holy Spirit comes in. Uh, you know, I sang to you when you were younger a song. In fact, I sang in a few chapels ago. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and stars, sun and earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. You know, it's a little kid's song, but it still packs a power punch truth. God is not finished with this old man or with you, young person. He's still working on you. And he only gets that done when you yield or lean into or listen to the Holy Spirit. And so last, the last big fast fact about the Holy Spirit is an all day, every day miracle that only comes through the work of the Holy Spirit. In fact, this miracle is called one of two things in the scripture. It's either called walking in the Spirit or it's called being filled with the Spirit. Uh, the Bible says that uh, when the Holy Spirit is uh, when you're walking with the Spirit or when you're being filled with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is controlling you. You know, when a person's uh, anger controls them, we say they're filled with rage. They're under the control of their anger. And, uh, and so the uh, same is true when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. To, to be filled with anger, not very good. But to be filled with the Holy Spirit means to be under the control or under the influence. Uh, can I just say to you today from my heart to you, to yours, that being filled with the Holy Spirit is the number one thing you need to know and understand after you have accepted Christ into your life. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is the, it's the secret of anything good in my life. And it's the secret 
of living for God to living like God and for God working through you. So today in Ephesians chapter 5, my two favorite verses on the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 5, this verse changed my life. I hope it might yours to be, it, the Bible says in the 18th verse of Ephesians 5, to not be drunk with wine. It says that's a total waste of your time, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, when a person's had too much to drink, you can tell the way they drive or the way they walk. They've just had too much. And that's what God is saying. He says, don't be like that, but be filled or under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, to have all the Holy Spirit that you could possibly have. You know, I want to show you something here. Before you accepted Christ into your life, uh, you were an empty, <laughs> you were an empty vessel. And the, and the Holy Spirit came. Remember I said he convicts the world and you would feel it. Or maybe you prayed and saw an answer to prayer. I remember when I was a kid, I wasn't a Christian, but I prayed and asked God to help my grandfather. And sure enough, God did. And I think God was doing that to show me he was real. He was getting close to me. There were times I felt God's closest to me, but I was still empty on the inside. When I asked Jesus to come into my heart, the Holy Spirit came in and he came into my heart. It went from the Holy Spirit working around me to the Holy Spirit being in me. And so now there's another truth. The Bible says that when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it is something more than just the Holy Spirit coming in you. You know, the same thing. So here I am, I have the Holy Spirit in me, but when the Holy Spirit fills me or controls me, which happens when I surrender and say, I'm all yours. Whatever you want from me today, whatever you've got for me today, I'll go where you want me to go. Go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. God, I, w use me with anybody that comes in my path. When that's your heart, you're emptying out yourself. And what happens, Ephesians 5 says, you're filled with with the Holy Spirit and oh my goodness wait I am you're Phil and and I just made a mess I got water all over me and it is uh, like a mess up here and that's what happens when you're filled with the Holy Spirit the the, the Bible says it not he only fills you but it overflows and on to everybody else but instead of a mess it's a message it's a life touching other lives. To be filled with the Holy Spirit means that God is using you. Is God spilling over in your life? Are you being filled? Is he spilling over on your mom and dad at home, on your brothers and sisters, on your friends, when you're on the phone or text messaging or, you know, when you do things? One day we'll go out and we'll be doing things together with our friends. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he overflows all over you. So get ready. Make room for the work of the Holy Spirit. We have much more to say about God working in your life and helping you face the storms in life. But we just needed to take a quick break today to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. Read Ephesians 5.18. Read Galatians 5.16. Walk in the Spirit and you won't obey your sinful desires. Such a powerful thing. And I'll talk with you next time. And God bless you real good.